We're going to call this meeting to order. Uh, first order of business is actually a little different than our agenda. We have some new members to welcome and swear in this morning. Um, I'm going to turn that over to Christina. Good morning, everyone, and welcome um, to those new members that are here. Um, a little unconventional because we're not all in person, but what I will just have you do is you can stay in your seats so we're all kind of separated. Those of you at home that are watching, um, I will send you out a sheet to sign afterwards. But for the new members, I will have you raise your right hand and repeat after me. I say your name. I, I do my name. I say your name. Do solemnly swear that I will support and comply. Do solemnly swear that I will support and comply with the Constitution of the United States of America. With the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution and laws of the state of Minnesota. The Constitution and laws of the state of Minnesota. The Charter. The charter. Laws and ordinances of the city of Moorhead. Laws and ordinances of the city of Moorhead. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. Delegated to me. Delegated to me. As a member of the Moorhead City Charter Commission. As a member of the Moorhead City Charter Commission. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Welcome, new members. Very to have you. Very happy to have you aboard. Um, in attendance today, we also have Mr. Ramstead from Hello. Ramstead Law. So welcome him today. Um, Dan Molly, city manager. And I think we can go to first order of business. Um, first order of business is approval of minutes. There was an adjustment to the minutes, Christina. We noticed a tiny typo in the process of electing the chair, nominating the chair. Do you want to touch on that? Yes, so um, in the minutes, I think there was just a question regarding, um, let me pull it up here. Um, who made the nomination for nominating Joel as the chair um, and then the second. So I'm going to go back and just watch the video on that one just to verify that. Um, so I will make that change. And then if you don't mind, um, if we do a roll call, just so I know who's on the line also. Sounds good. So let's do a roll call vote. Uh, Martha Castanon. Present. Alexa Dixon. Present. Laura Christensen. Leah Ducharme. Present. Moshe Peterson. Here. Dave Setterquist. Here. Kathy Child. Joel Reeder. Here. Julian Dahlquist. Here. Athena Grasic. Mark Foxland. Here. We're good. Thanks. Did I miss anybody? Thanks, Christina. I did have that call, roll call on my list. I just didn't hit it. Okay. Now I believe we can um, go ahead with, so we could move to pass the minutes with your amendment to it. Is that correct, Christina? So do we have a motion to... Um, past last meeting's minutes. So moved, Mark. Second, Raider. So motion, now do we, sorry, I'm getting the rules down. Do we need to go to vote to approve the minutes? Yep, we'll just do a roll call roll again. Roll call vote. Thanks, and I'll Christina. just do last names this time to yep. make it quicker. <laughs> Castanon. Approve. Dixon. I'm going to abstain since I wasn't here. Christensen. Abstain. Ducharme. 
Peterson? Abstain. Senator Quist? Approve. Chile? Approve. Joel? Approve. Oh, sorry, then I said your first name. I threw it out. Dahlquist? Uh, so uh, I'll uh, I'll abstain. <laughs> sorry, <I'm laughs> I'll, I'll abstain. Voxland? Oh, yes. Motion passes. Motion passes. All right. Thank you. All right. Next on our agenda, any reports from the chair, officers, commissions, and committees? I do not have anything. Does anybody else have anything? Uh, actually, yeah. F regarding the minutes, I was just uh, sorry. I. I, I missed the attachment here. Uh, I just see that there was um, that we uh, my motion to nominate uh, Mark as chair uh, looks like it was the deciding thing when I know that wasn't the case. And I remember pulling that from the from the table. And obviously, uh, Joel is our chair. So I was just wanted to, to make sure we clarified that. Correct, and that's what uh, we were talking about with Christina about making the adjustment that that motion did get pulled, and um, it, so it should reflect that the vote was um, to nominate me as chair. So Christina will make that adjustment. Okay, perfect. I'm sorry I missed that part. <laughs> Problem. So, any other reports from this commission? Having if I could, this is Mark. I would, this isn't a report as much as I would ask the Charter Commission to just watch as the city council members choose a new city council member and just think through the operation, the mechanics of that, just to see if it seems smooth and fair to our, our voters, our constituents. Um, I know that's been a question that's been brought up for many, many years, and it seems to get refined every once in a while by Charter Commission. Uh, I think everybody being aware of how this operation works might, might be good just so we can see if things are working the way we feel that they should, or if there should be some more tweaking um, on that process. So, Mark, can you repeat again the exact process you're talking about? I missed the very beginning. Okay, the process that, that is in charter talks about a vacancy on the council. And what happens right now is instead of going to a vote of the people, uh, nomin uh, people can nominate themselves. And then the council goes through a process and then chooses and then now the way it's written it it goes to the next uh election of of the city so the next city election which would be 2022 uh, that's been tweaked several times over the years and always looking for how that can be best done and so that's what I'm asking everybody to do is just watch as this process unfolds, see if you feel there's something that maybe needed needs to still be tweaked to make this more fair for our citizens. All right, thanks, Mark. Um, interesting point. Do you remember the last time this happened? If there's some history we could look back on? I don't uh, right off. The question that was brought up a couple times is um, since it isn't the ward that's voting for the uh, council member, but it's the rest of the sitting city council, uh, the fairness question of there'll be only one person voting that actually is a ward member, and that would be the other council member from that ward. And the other seven votes would be from people that don't live in the ward. Is that a concern? 
uh, they decided it was council and the charter commission decided no that isn't because you move to the next election and it went from the next election to the next uh, city election there so you get out of the thing where if there's a special election for something else this gets dumped in with it just looking at the mechanics just see if the mechanics feel right and feel fair for our citizens when the it's just been an ongoing process over the years all right thank you mark dan you know, if I could add uh, one point, that's a fair question. Uh, it, this has happened a couple times in recent history. Uh, most, uh, let's see here, what was it, 2015, uh, when um, Jim Haney was elected to the Clay County Commission and Melissa Fabian filled the seat in Ward 2. And then most recently when uh, Mayor Carlson um, uh, was voted in as mayor and now her Ward 2 vacancy is open. So uh, the council had um, interviews of six council candidates for Ward 2 um, at its last meeting on April 10th, and then we'll be discussing it on April 26th. So, you know, this is happening uh, right now. So, and I anticipate uh, with a council this size that it will happen again and again and again. So, uh, a very fair question. Yeah. And going way back, um, there have been council members who have been chosen simply because it came, uh, a council vacancy came within weeks of a council election, city council election. So the second place finisher uh, became a council member. Uh, by choice of the council. Uh, I remember that happening twice. Uh, it's just just checking to see if it feels and looks good and seems fair to our citizens. And that's, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the system. I'm just saying we as a charter need, commission need to look at this just to make sure that uh, it's happening fairly. This is a pretty major piece of the charter. All right, thank you, Mark. It will be interesting to follow. Um, and for the new members, I believe you all got packets. So the a copy of the charter is in that packet. It, it's a long read, but since we are in this uh, commission, it's an interesting read. Um, a lot obviously the city runs on this document so and that's why we're here to make sure the document does the city right so thank you mark anybody else have any comments reports before we move on uh yeah i would this is julian okay go ahead julian um i i know going off of what um uh mark said i know there were conversations on that very subject uh in this uh charter commission um and they just kind of stopped and i can't remember if that was before you you came on board uh joel but um i know we've had some turnover with with city staff as it pertains to this commission since then uh so i just wanted to make note that we have had conversations on the subject and it was just kind of an abrupt um, changing of, of the subject. So um, to, our, to our folks that help us out, um, I'll, I'll see if I can find, uh, look back and find what meetings those were. Um, but that was that was a few years ago. Uh, but I, I, I seem to recall that it was around the time then when that appointment that uh, Manager Molly was talking about, we were having those same discussions here and, and they never really materialized into anything. And it was kind of frustrating because I seem to remember we spent at least two meetings on the subject. So I just wanted to add that to the record. All right. Thank you, Julian. Uh, just one more time, if anybody else said anything. All right. Hearing nothing, we move on to public comment. And I'm not sure here, Christina, if we can see if there's um, member or non-members on this meeting that would want to speak would we see it on our screen or is that just you
Sorry about that. Um, we would see it on the screen, and we have no callers at this time. Okay. Um, and no, nobody is in attendance here, so do we need to call three times for public comment or not? Yes. So I'm calling second time for any public comment. And calling a third time for public comment. All right. Having heard none, we move on to agenda item number two. Um, the elected officials serving on paid commissions or committees. So the um, the item we've been talking about for quite a few weeks, and that's why we have Mr. Ramstead with us today. Um, unfortunately, we're going to hear from him after this meeting, so I don't know if anybody has anything to add right now to what we've already talked about. If you do, um, please speak up, but I think a lot of what we're going to hear from Mr. Ramstead will help us um, further along our decision on what we've been talking about. So with that, does that anybody have anything they want um, to add to what we've been talking about? Yeah, this is Julian. This is essentially me raising my hand. <laughs> go, ahead. go ahead, Julian. Um, so I was looking at, and, and uh, thank you, uh, Clerk Rust, for sending these documents out. I was able to look uh, through both of them. And just kind of my summation, it, was, it seemed like there were two opinions presented to us, if I, if I read correctly, that we have, we have the state law, the state code itself, and the opinion of the League of Minnesota Cities. And those are really two opinions that I wanted to hear um, when we started talking about this issue. Um, but my understanding was uh, on page 12 of the, uh, the state law that it seemed pretty clear as it pertains to public service commissions and appointing elected officials that there is a that there is a clause uh, if that's the right term uh, to to allow for appointment of one elected official to that commission um, let's see here and I just wanted to make sure that my understanding was was the same as everyone else's but uh, on page 12 there was the municipal public utilities commissioner uh, uh, city council member um, that it was is noted as compatible with uh, state statute 412.341 subdivision one with the footnote of 23. Um, and that was really my, it seemed like I said, pretty cut and dry. And I just wanted to see if that matched with everyone else's uh, reading of the same uh, documents. This is Mark. Um, I read that and I thought the same thing until I was paging down. And then I had to go back up. Uh, Public Service, Public Utilities Commission is a state commission. And I think that's what this is referring to. Uh, Public Utilities Commission is, um, and I can't remember, I want to say it's a five member board that uh, regulates the utilities electric utilities of the state of minnesota but that's something we i was going to have clarified by mr ramstead because i i was reading it one way like you were julian and then i thought back and i thought oh i wonder if that is the state commission and i i guess um for our new members this probably sounds that you don't know what we're talking about. So I apologize for that. I should have given you a little uh, a, a brief on what we've been talking about. So um, I'm not sure on the date, but council person Heidi Durant was nominated to the Mord Public Service Commission. She was a sitting member of the city council. Um, it was brought up in one of our meetings that some of us felt that could be a conflict of interest to have a sitting member of council basically appoint themselves to another paid position. Um, since then, Heidi is no longer on the council, correct? She is, um, but it did, it was brought up by multiple members um, and we all, I can't speak for everybody. I felt it was something that we should look into reading some of the documents Mr. Ramstead um, gave to us. I do see there are um, some possibilities of conflict of interest and 
obviously, like I said at the beginning, we'll know more after we get a chance to go through these documents. Um, Dan, if you had anything else to add on the history for our new members that I'm not pointing out? Well, I don't know if there's much to add. I mean, in this you know case, I mean, it's it's what our the charter permits, and so you know, I mean, charters are different around the state, of course, and so there was the question uh, that that came up, and uh, our city attorney uh, John Shockley uh, declared a conflict. So. Uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, the city attorney um, uh, uh, Ramstead here. Uh, he serves in Detroit Lakes and a number of other smaller communities. Has a great depth of knowledge and experience, uh, you know, around the matter. Um, you know, we'll be doing a little training around what charter commissions are, the importance, um, the functions, um, and so some of that will be answered. Uh, related to this question, I guess it's, um, you know. Uh, one that is around if the appointment of an elected official on uh, uh, the utility commission, uh, you know, fits within the charter, you know, and so and whether the charter commission wants to proceed with the question or not. Um, okay, thank you, Dan. Um, and I, I think for a new members also reading into the charter and it, you know, clearly states what the public um, utility commission should be. It's it's meant to be run as its own business. It's not supposed to be politicized. Um, and it's been very successful throughout the years. I think that's why this, when this came up, it just, it didn't, to me, it didn't feel right. And I think there's a few other members that felt the same and that's why we've been talking about it. So um, if any of you have questions, um, we can bring it up now or as we go through. And I think actually the timing of having Mr. Ramstead here to talk about what a charter does too at its, you know, at its core is good timing for all the new members and for some of us that <laughs> maybe need to learn some more. Um, anybody else have any comments on this? And I, I kind of figured we would go fast through this since we are waiting to hear and uh, dig in and learn more. Um, so if I don't hear of anybody else with any comments, I think we can move on. Um, next item on the agenda is any new business. Anybody have anything they need to bring up? Having heard nothing, Christina, is there anything we need to do with the unfinished business or can we just leave it? We don't, we don't have to um, have a motion to leave it as unfinished business. It just stays that way. Yeah, correct. Okay. Uh, any other comments or anything else before we move to adjourn and go into class with Mr. Ramstead? <laughs> yeah, this is Julian again. Go ahead, Julian. Sorry, I'm raising my hand a lot today. Uh, I just wanted to, to make sure that that uh, uh, Mr. Ramstead hears uh, how appreciative I am of this presentation of information that he was able to find such uh, detailed um, um, records of, of this very issue. And, and I really appreciate his uh, diligence on this. Thank you, Julian. Um, at this point, then, I can move to adjourn.